Christ our Lord, you bless the wedding at Cana by your presence, and there you turn water into the finest wine. Throughout this blessed land, fill our hearts with joy, and make us worthy to reflect upon your miracles and your teachings, to clothe ourselves with penance and to strengthen ourselves with prayer and with good works. We glorify and thank you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the Church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to God the Father, who in his love invited all people to the wedding banquet of his only begotten Son, and to the Son, the heavenly Bridegroom, who in his love accepted the invitation to the wedding banquet at Cana, where he changed water into wine. And to the Holy Spirit, who by his descent invites us to the share in the banquet of the Father and the Son. To the good one be glory and honor on this blessed Sunday and all the days of our lives, now and forever. O Christ, the only begotten Son, on this day you chose to sit among the invited guests, enriching them with the abundance of your divine gifts. As your disciples believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God, we also believe in you. In place of the old law, you have given us your new gospel, and instead of the fruit of the vine, you have quenched our thirst with the chalice of your redeeming blood. Now, O Lord, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense and through the intercession of your Virgin Mother, whose request you granted, that we may always drink of your holy wine, quenching our thirst with your heavenly love. May your light shine within the world, and may we know that you are the spring of living water from which we may drink. 
O Lord, bless our families on our Lenten journey, that we may reach the harbor of salvation, which is the glorious feast of your resurrection. We glorify and thank you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. is the thirst of the church and of all people. Now accept the fragrance of our incense and strengthen us that we may fast with pure hearts and with sincere penance and become worthy to share in your holy banquet. To you be glory and thanks to your Father and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Kadi shot, Allo Kadi shot,
Let your servants, Lord, thank you, for you made the water wine. Let our spirit saints glorify you when your majesty will shine. A reading from the letter of Saint Paul to the Romans. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. I know and I am convinced in the Lord Jesus that nothing is impure in itself. Still, it is unclean for someone who thinks it unclean. If your brother is being hurt by what you eat, your conduct is no longer in accord with charity. Do not, because of your food, destroy him for whom Christ has died. So do not let your good be reviled, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of food and drink, but of righteousness, of peace, and of joy in the Holy Spirit. Whoever serves Christ in this manner is pleasing to God and is approved by others. Let us then pursue what leads to peace and to edify one another. For the sake of food, do not destroy the work of God. Everything is indeed clean, but it is wrong for anyone to become a stumbling block by eating. It is good not to eat meat or to drink wine or to do anything that causes your brother to stumble. Keep the faith that you have to yourself in the presence of God. Blessed is the one who does not condemn himself by what he approves. For whoever has doubts is condemned if he eats, because this is not from faith. For whatever is not from faith is sin. Praise be to God always. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed are those who are in the heart to the way of peace of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, We offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The Apostle John writes, On the third day, 
There was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding feast. When the wine had run short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what is that to me and to you? My hour has not yet come. And his mother said to the servers, do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. And Jesus told them, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he said to them, now draw out some and take it to the head waiter. And so they took it. And when the head waiter had tasted the water that had become wine without knowing where it came from, although the servers who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and he said to him, everyone serves good wine firstly and then when the people have drunk freely, an inferior one. But you have kept the best wine until now. Jesus did this at the beginning of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and so he revealed his glory, and his disciples began to believe in him. This is the truth, peace be with you. For the kingdom of God is not in food and drink, but in righteousness and in peace and joy in the spirit of holiness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Now last week, during the week of all the commemoration of all the faithful departed, we considered the fact that our lives are in an inevitable march toward death inexorably. We are guaranteed that we're all going to die. And I mentioned to you at the same time that what we'd have to be wanted to discuss liturgically is the integration of that kind of horizontal movement with the vertical. Meaning that from the time of our baptism, when we are given a new life within Christ and transformed within that grace and that faith, we are also in a procession, as it were. But in this case, not towards death, but towards our Lord. So we mentioned last week that death is transformed. It's a catastrophizing of the catastrophe. And so that death takes on a different meaning. So on this first Sunday of Lent, of course, we look at another procession, another movement forward. But in this case, not in time, not of this world, but of a procession and a movement towards our Lord. It is the integration in a sense of a horizontal movement as we move through this world, but transformed by grace, moving towards our Lord. It's an integration, because we've mentioned a few weeks ago when we considered what the liturgy does within our lives and what the church is as a reality of that manifestation of what St. Paul calls the assembly of the firstborn, those who are already in the presence of the vision of God. And that that integration is made presence here below. We mentioned, we'd use the terminology, that kind of vertical integration. 
But by the transformation of our baptism, we begin a procession towards our Lord. It's why in death, historically throughout the centuries, when someone died at home, it was the family that took care of the deceased. It was the family that in conjunction with prayers would wash the body, prepare the body, dress. We don't think of that in America because it's been just over a century when we started inventing funeral homes and we had someone else do it. But it's difficult for us to imagine, for the Catholic population at least, for the first generation of people who did that, it must have been shocking and somewhat horrifying to have your father's body just taken out of the house by someone else that you paid to do this. And of course, this is still relatively new in, England, in, uh, in Europe. And I've mentioned before, I was introduced to it when I arrived in 1985 at the seminary in Switzerland. And one of the sisters in the convent attached to the seminary had just died the day before. And for the first time in my little American life, I experienced what it used to be. Because the sisters just simply washed the body of sister. They clothed the body in a clean and fresh habit, changed the linens on the bed where she had died, and placed the body back into the bed where she had died. And throughout that night, the seminarians, the priests, the sisters, we came to that little cell in the convent and would kneel down and pray for her. And that continued on all night long. And the next morning, the seminarians came and simply took the body from the bed and placed it into the coffin. And we processed from the place of her death down into the church. And from there, the interruption of having the divine liturgy, if you were, the procession continued then to the place where the body was laid to repose and burial. That is the procession of the movement from our baptism to our Lord, but which is interrupted by that catastrophe of death. But death, as we say, has been turned on its head on Good Friday. And it's not the death that we're actually thinking about this week, but of the procession, that movement towards our Lord. It's why if you look in the Maronite ceremonies surrounding death, they're filled with hymns and psalms, enormously long hymns and psalms. They would have spent easily hours praying around the dead. I often recommend to you to read the scriptures from the readings of this week, and you can do that. But what I would ask you to do this week on the first week of Lent is go and read Psalm 118, or in some enumerations it may be listed as 119. It is the longest psalm of the 150. In fact, so long is it that throughout the centuries in the Latin church, it was just taken by pieces in the very morning office, in the mid-morning office, at the noonday office, and in the mid-afternoon prayer of the divine office. This psalm is so large, you could take it and just break it up between all these hours of prayer. Hours meaning canonical hours, not hours meaning 60 minutes. It won't take you that long to read it. And when you read it, it will sound repetitive at times. Because what it is, is the glorification of God speaking to us. It's all about the law on Mount Sinai. And how the commandments of God and the directives of God and God speaking to us in his communications give us life. And that's the old law. That's the old covenant. But well worth reading, and I bring it up this week because it is the psalm that is recited surrounding death. This idea that life is given to us because God has spoken to us, and the commandments have been given to us, and the God of Mount Sinai brings us life. And so in this procession that we move, the vertical level of our movement throughout time 
but no longer fixed in time because we are elevated transcendently by grace and baptism and faith. Which is why the prayers of last week, the aspect of we are invited to these dwellings of heavenly joy and light by God's invitation and by our perfect faith in that invitation that we arrive at life. And so this vertical aspect is what we wind up having on the liturgical, even in the organization of the building, classically. You have the back area that is strictly called the narthex. The doors, swinging doors close, and then you have the outside door. The vestibule, we often call it. But throughout classical antiquity, when the churches were built, fully able to build the whole, the, the narthex was your transition point from the world of time and of death, transitioning to the place of the assembly of the firstborn. And that's why your holy waters are in the narthex, in places where it's warmer. <laughs> it's a fountain in a courtyard out front. And so, for example, the Church of San Clemente in Rome, and a number of them, you'll find outside the narthex will be a courtyard area. And then there's another door leading you out into the street. But the fountain was there for your cleansing, for the purification. It's the same meaning that the, that the holy water fount has when we come in. It is to remove us by a cleansing from the profane world of time, which is touched by death, to move through this cleansing as a preparation into the house of God. And then when you are in the main part of the church, this horizontal procession from the world in, this is known as the nave. Not nave with a K, as in a scoundrel, but nave simply is starting with N, because it comes from the Latin word navis, which means ship. One, because it has a rectangular shape to it, but also because it is the place in with the divine mysteries that we find our transition and our movement and our journey towards the good one, towards the almighty. And that's to explain something. For many of you, you've been here for all this last year. And I'm sure that when you first arrive, you find it strange, this Aramaic. Baito chaloho ele. So this baito chaloho. Even some of the Maronites were struck because, of course, I do it all the time. Some of them, we can do it in English. Oh, no, no, no. It's short. We can memorize it. It's easy. But you'll notice we have two of them. The Baitoch Aloho, when the priests are in front of this section, which we call the Bema. And if you've never paid attention to it before, when you come up for communion, pay attention that there are two levels to this sanctuary. And the Bema in the Hebrew and Aramaic means throne. Wakdom. And so I bow be down before your throne. That is the prayer that we pray in the beginning as we ship towards the Lord and the nave. That we pray that we enter the house of God and we bow down in adoration before the throne of God, the Bema. Because it is here at the Bema where we hear the word of God in the scriptures and in the prayers that are given to us. This is a very ancient idea amongst the Maronites, amongst the Syriacs, because the Bema actually is originally just out of the Jewish synagogues. And the Bema would oftentimes be a platform that would even be further away out, more among the people. So you'd be sitting on either side, kind of all around, where the scriptures would be read. And we have architecturally, in some places even where the Bema is a distinct, here they're connected. But you would have a platform where the clergy would sit for the readings. And then as you have the second introduction, is the altar aloho of God. And that is the second entrance because you're going from the holy place, like in the temple of the Old Testament, into the Holy of Holies, from the Kaddish to the Kaddish Kaddish to the Holy of Holies. And so you have a second entrance, and we have architectural remains, archi architectural, archaeological remains in Syria, 
showing that the beam are being connected by a platform, a walkway. It's not very high up, it's just one step, but still above, and connecting from the Bema to the Holy of Holies. Because while the readings were being done, and historically we would have an Old Testament reading, a New Testament reading, and the Gospel. And while that was being done, on the altar that would be on the Bema, the deacons would be preparing the bread and the wine and the water and all of that. So that when we finish the readings, hearing the voice of God who speaks to us in glory, bringing us life, then the deacons would pick up the oblations that had been prepared, the bread and the wine, and then began, I have entered into the altar of God, to the God who gives joy to my youth, who rejoices my youth, who makes me new again. That is your two stages of the movement from the world through the purification of a narthex, the holy water, into the place where we are in movement and procession towards our Lord, that we bow down in adoration before the throne of God, the Bema, before we are actually allowed access into the Kaddish, Kaddishe. Do you remember that historically we would have had a curtain for most of the time across the Holy of Holies that would have been opened and closed periodically during the whole in Nafra. So this gives you a liturgical aspect of the horizontal procession towards our Lord in conjunction with the procession we make through time from our baptism through our death, the catastrophe which momentarily makes us have a bump in our lives as we continue towards the place of the assembly of all the firstborn. It is why this first Sunday of Lent is Cana Sunday, the transformation of water into wine, the transformation that takes place within the festivities of a nuptial feast. We won't go into those in detail. We'll do them next year when we do the Gospels. But I just wanted to put before you this idea of our procession and our transition that takes place that is so beautifully in a sense, orchestrated in this siphonic movement of grace and transformation towards the hidden one. And I bring it up because immediately after this sermon, we're going to change water into wine. Nothing against the Roman church, but we have two individuals who will this day be adopted as children of St. Mary. So Chris and Diane, Chris said this morning, uh, Diane said this morning, she says, this is my wedding day. They've been coming for about four years and have been so bowled over by the beauty of the ancient church of Antioch that they have, as others have done before them, have asked to change churches. They're Catholics. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing, nothing that needs to be changed. But as was said to me a few years ago by a couple of other women who also made this transition, I told them, you're more than welcome. They'd been coming at that point for five years. Said, you're more than welcome to be here. We are happy to have you here. And they said, no, Abuna, we know that. We know that we're welcome here and we love this. But we want to be children of St. Marin. We want to be daughters of St. Marin. And at that point, that was one of the best requests I had ever heard. Because that completely encapsulizes why anyone would ever transfer between churches. Not just for the spirituality, not just for the beauty of the liturgy and the way the mysteries are celebrated, but in this procession from baptism and faith towards the hidden God, this desire that for the time that I have here below, for this very short life that we're given each of us, I want it to be as glorious and as profound as I can by belonging to the church that has been martyred throughout the centuries. And so it's a great joy that we congratulate today, Chris and Diane, for making this step. Not only have they been bowled over, it's their son who's also studying for the Maronite priesthood that you saw over the summertime. 
So God has a way in the procession of life, not only of lifting us by our faith and grace and baptism, but also even in that movement of supernatural life, sometimes to upend everything and say, but do it differently now. Now I desire you to be the children of Marmarun and to be children of that house of Marin and who are the descendants of the martyrs. May each one of us have during this Lenten season a profound and beautiful and joyous experience of prayer and of fasting and of the works, good works that we call alms. Alms is not money, alms is good works. And that may God shine his light within all of us to inflame that charity, enkindle that faith illuminated by the charity inflamed so that we may have the strength of perseverance to continue in our procession from this world to the hidden God of majesty and the God of all consolation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
our nearest barangays, our brothers and sisters in Big Mahu. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from the light, true God from true God, begotten from the beginning, comes to the end of all the Father. Church. We confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. He tell what my dem hate our loho, while what our loho dem hate our youth. Why dem silvo taibo talk, hey you lal by toch west good and high and low, or go at a show. Thank you. 
Almighty Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, our Holy Father, Saint Mary, Saint Jude, and Saint Cyril, and Methodius. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. We will continue with the anaphora of St. John the Apostle on page 815, 815. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord God and Father, you are true love, security that is ever sure, and hope that never fails. Grant love, happiness, and everlasting peace to your children here before you. Make us worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with pure hearts and souls, and with a holy kiss worthy of your blessed name, that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God. before your majesty send us your grace and glorious blessings in the heights of your heavenly sanctuary that we may glorify you your only son and your holy spirit now and forever 
O Lord, you sent your beloved Son at the appointed time for our salvation, and he gave us these holy and life-giving mysteries. Do not look upon us as strangers, and do not turn your holy face away from us because of our many sins. For you alone are the Holy One, with your only Son and your only Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father, and the grace of the only begotten Son, and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It is right and just to praise you, O Lord of all in heaven and on earth. The powers on high in the heavens where they dwell glorify you. The fiery ranks exalt you, the cherubim bless you, and the seraphim worship you. They cry out and they proclaim. Son and your Holy Spirit, one and indivisible in nature, and you sanctify all things by your divine power. For our salvation, you sent your Son into the world. He descended, became flesh, suffered, and was crucified for us, who had distorted his image. Ansabe lachma mida koni shoto o barachu kodesh waksu ya bil talmida karo mara sabachu la mene kulhu hono denita fachu Dachlo paikun wachlov sagiyem me tachaseu me tihem Chosoyon haume wa hoyedan alam alamin Chokanno alkoso damsich wa men hamro wa men mayo Barachu Kadesh, who ya bil talmita karamara, sabesh tawa mene kulhu, hono denita, demodi la diati ki hadato, dachlo faikun wachlov sagie, mete shadu meti heb. Do this in memory of me, for whenever you eat this body and drink this blood, you proclaim my death until I come again. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask 
O Christ our God, we remember your plan of salvation, and we implore your goodness. When you come in glory with your holy angels, and all await the reward they deserve. And when you place the sheep to the right and the goats to the left, do not look upon us as strangers to your household, and do not turn your holy face away from us. Do not let our sins and offenses pierce your holy heart, and do not separate us from you. For we have professed your holy name and have proclaimed your divinity. Rather treat us according to your promises. Forgive our sins, pardon us, and have mercy upon your inheritance. For this your repentant church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. Annin morio, annin morio, annin morio, ni te moro rojo, hayo corisho, o en la gente la ayuda al corvo, no, o no. Anno dab mach no nuten abad lach mono fagro dam shiho alo dilan. Ulam so ho dam ko so no dimo dile dam shiho alo dilan. May these holy mysteries sanctify the bodies and souls of those who share them. Cleanse their hearts, purify their thoughts, and be a pledge of the heavenly kingdom and new life forever. Amen. O Lord, we now remember in this sacrifice all the holy churches and the shepherds of the true faith, especially Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bishop of Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the bishops. With them we remember the priests, the deacons, and all who serve your church. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace and stability of the whole world, for a blessed and prosperous year, for an abundant harvest, for the sick and the oppressed, and for all who call upon your holy name on land, at sea, or in the air, and who profess that you are the true God. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. Remember, O Lord, those who have presented the offering upon this altar, and those who desired to do so but were unable, and grant them their petitions. We pray to you, O Lord. We remember all the saints, the fathers, prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, Mary, the mother of God, Saint Joseph, Saint Jude, Saint Cyril, and Saint Methodius, and all the righteous and the just. Through their prayers, make us worthy to stand among them. We pray to you, O Lord. <clears throat> Remember, O Lord, in your grace, those who have left us and have gone to you from the first Christian disciples to this day. They were signed with the seal of baptism and received the precious body and blood of your Son. They waned for you in your life-giving hope. Raise them up on the last day and in your mercy forgive all their sins. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Grant us, O 
grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. oblation who offered yourself to us. You are the forgiving sacrifice who offered yourself to the Father. You are the Holy Spirit who offered yourself to your mercy, may our prayer rise like you, which we all offer together to you. O God the Father, you accept prayers and you answer petitions. You taught us through your beloved Son to stand before you and to call upon you with pure souls and clear consciences, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of God. Deliver us, O Lord, from every temptation and from the harm of evil, for you have power over all, and we raise glory to you now and forever. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. O Lord, in your grace and abundant mercy, bless those who bow before you. Make us worthy to share in your life-giving mysteries and to join the assembly of your saints, that with them we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory.
again and again we thank you, O oh Lord, and raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. Lover of all people, have mercy on us. Gracious God and Father, how can we repay you for your goodness and for the salvation you have just given us? Who can give you the glory you truly deserve? In our weakness and insofar as we are able, we worship, praise, and thank you, your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with you. Jesus Christ, our God, we worship, thank, and praise you. We implore your goodness and abundant mercy for the salvation of the whole world, for the protection of the living and eternal rest to the departed, for the feeding of the hungry and the support of the needy, for the visiting of the sick and the consolation of the grieving. Through your grace dwell in them, 
and by your abundant mercy give them life. By your holy cross, bless your people and protect your inheritance. Adoration is due to you, to your Father, and to your holy and life-giving Spirit, now and forever. Amen. So just as a reminder that after the liturgy, you're more than welcome to stay and pray. But please don't visit within the church. You have to carry your conversations outdoors in the fresh air. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.